This um, instructional video is going to be about glazing. We've already gone over under glazing. As a quick recap, under glazes are a liquid clay that has color in it. We're able to put under glazes onto light leather hard, fire them in the kiln, and then we have the option to put glazes over that. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about glazes. Glazes are different chemically because they're actually not clay at all. We are now talking about uh, chemical components. They're still minerals that are mined from the earth, but they are um, a recipe of chemicals mixed with water that um, have a chemical reaction when you put it in a kiln and you expose it to heat and fire. And then that chemical reaction is how we get our color and how we get our finish. Um, I have a couple examples of pieces that have a glaze on them. Um, typically glazes have more of that shiny glassy finish. That's because there are particles in a glaze that's literally powdered glass. And so when they uh, are exposed in the kiln, they melt. So it is literally a glass coating. Um, oftentimes, you know, you can find glazes that maybe aren't so shiny. They're a little bit more dull or matte. Um, that, that doesn't mean it's not glass. It's still a glass coating. It just has less of that um, luster, less of that shine. Um, so pretty much when you work with the glazes here, um, you are working with like a liquid glass. And that's what I want you to consider it. Um, there are some a lot of safety precautions that you need to take and a lot of care that goes into working with glazes and we're going to go over all of that today. Um, the first thing you need to be aware of is glazes can only go on bisquare. Period. End of story. If you put a glaze onto an unfired clay project, it will not survive the firing. Um, so you can tell it's bisquare, remember, because it's kind of a pinkish peach color and it has been fired, so it has some strength to it now, okay? So that's the first step. The second step is you will need to keep a log, which I call glaze notes. Glaze notes are located on that white board um, on the clips. And if ever you look over there and they're empty, just let me know, I make more copies. Glaze notes is a log of what glazes you have put on your bisquare. There's a couple reasons why we do this. First is safety. Um, sometimes glazes become tainted or sometimes they become um, old or problematic. And if I fire a glaze firing, and I open up the kiln and there's a lot of problems, like the glazes are um, running or the glazes are kind of cracking, or if we open up the kiln and there's a lot going on that isn't supposed to be going on, the only way that I can resolve the problem is by asking to see your glaze notes. Um, I can look at your glaze notes and see that, oh, okay, every student that used the celadon glaze, well, that celadon glaze is misbehaving. And it helps me kind of be like a detective to figure out what the problem is, okay? So it's really, really important. Um, the second thing though, is I promise you that once we start glazing lots of things in here, um, when it comes out of the kiln and you look at it, you will not remember how you got that. You just won't. Um, so much time uh, goes by from you know the day you dipped it into the glazes to the day it comes out of the kiln that number one, you just forget. But number two, sometimes you have really cool chemical reactions that, that may not look like the test tile. Um, and so you need to be able to go back to your notes and say, oh, this piece, this piece was sapphire blue with celadon on top of it. And wow, look how that turned out. So we need these glaze notes for both good and bad situations. And you will soon discover how often you reference them. Okay? Um, but remember, it is a requirement. It's not an option. Okay? 
So the first thing that I do is I start with my glaze notes and I figure, okay, I'm starting with this piece first. And the um, first row, the first column here says, draw or describe your pottery. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw my mug and the distinguishing characteristics about it so that I can remember. And then I'll just call this mug with upper lip, okay, to talk about this, okay? Then the next thing I wanna do is kind of go to my test tiles and get an idea of what I'm going for. So over here, it says mid-fire glazes. These are the test tiles, and they're called mid-fire glazes because we fire them at a middle temperature, uh, a middle range temperature. So in the world of ceramics, we usually talk about low fire, mid, and high fire. Um, in our studio, we work with mid-fire glazes. Okay. The way to read this is a little bit tricky, so I need to explain that to you. The top row, okay, and above them are the names of our different glazes in here. So right here, we have Celadon, Alberta Gold, and etc. Underneath it then is like the code. So Celadon is labeled C, Alberta Gold is AG, and etc. Okay. Below it represents the combination of two glazes, right? Now the way that you read it is first you kind of look at the grid and if you feel very interested in this test tile, then you will look below it and it says TM over SB, okay? Well, TM represents textured moss, and SB represents sapphire blue. The one that's on top means that that was the first glaze that went on, and then the one that was um, next uh, on the bottom of it represents the second glaze. So for this test tile, TM textured moss went on first, and then sapphire blue went on top of it. That's how to read this. Now please remember that just because you see something here does not always mean that's how it's gonna turn out. There are zero guarantees because there's a lot of factors that can change the way a glaze looks. Whether the glaze was thick or thin that day, whether you mixed up the glaze well or not so good, and it even can sometimes have a chemical reaction with the pieces that it's uh, sitting next to in the kiln. So there's so many factors that you're never gonna get an exact um, recreation, but you can kind of get a good idea, okay? So for my demonstration, um, I'm gonna kind of pick which one that um, I feel interested in. I'm gonna work with this test tile and below it, it tells me that I do speckled tan first and textured moss on top. So I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna go ahead and say um, speckled tan first, texture moss second, okay? So back here in these big buckets is where our glazes are housed, okay? And they're all labeled and even the lids have labels as well because we really need to not cross contaminate over here. This is an area where you have to be very diligent about keeping things clean and not like double dipping or dripping or anything like that. Um, if you contaminate one of these buckets, then you have messed up the entire um, chemical properties of the glaze and then um, it's, it's unreliable. Okay, so that's really important. Um, so here's my speckled tan I'm gonna need, and then at the very end is textured moss. I know that these are the two I'm gonna be using for this mug. The first thing I need to do is prepare the glazes. Um, if you look at this glaze, which is clear, you can see that once these glazes sit, and it doesn't take long, it could be one night, 
um, they separate. So all of the chemical kind of sinks to the bottom and then all of the water rises to the top. If I were to use the glaze in that state, it would, it would be the ugliest looking glaze. You would be so disappointed when it came out. Um, so the first thing we have to do is stir up the glazes very, very well, okay? This bucket of tools that's next to the glazes is for that purpose. You have options. First, we have big spoons and whisks that you can use to stir up the glaze. You would open it up, set down the lid, and just use one of these to stir it up extremely well. And, you know, some of these glazes you'll see have different densities than others. So for some of them, they stir up really quick. For some of them, you could be stirring for five minutes. Um, but you have to be picky in this step, okay? So you could stir it with um, a spoon. You can indeed stir it with your hand, okay? Um, glaze will not hurt you unless you are pregnant, okay? But if you are not, then you may use your hand. The reason why I like using my hand is because I can feel if there is chunks of glaze in there or if it's still really thick on the bottom. Um, so it's, you know, it's a good tool to use, okay? Just make sure that you wash your hand when you're done stirring it. I do want to teach you how to use is for when the glazes have really been sitting for a while and maybe they feel um, a little bit difficult to stir with your hand or with a spoon and the tool that we can use for that is a drill and I want to show you how to use that. This is the attachment that you will need and then over here on this side you will have to get the battery for the drill, which is right here, and you just slide it out. And then the drill is right here. Okay. The battery slides into the bottom, and it, it's kind of difficult to get it to snap. Okay. And then the attachment, so the drill at the tip, it spins, okay? So you spin it to open up the drill hole, put the attachment as far as it'll go, okay? Make sure it's hitting the back, and then you're gonna turn this to tighten it, okay? It'll start to tighten. When it tightens then, I really take it and I just squeeze it and tighten it as much as I can and then check it. Make sure the attachment's not coming out, okay? It acts just like um, a mixer or a blender, okay? When I push the button, it turns. Here's what you need to know. Put this into the glaze all the way down and then push the button. This is actually the tool that you use to like mix up concrete and things like that. It's an industrial tool. And then when you're done mixing, stop it and then pull it out. If you turn this on first and then put it into the glaze, it will splatter everywhere, including your face, your hair, the walls, everything. So make sure it goes all the way in, squeeze the button, stop the button, and then pull it out, okay? And then you have to make sure that you clean it. So you're just gonna loosen this, pull it out, and then you just wash it at the sink, okay? And once it's clean, you put it back. Make sure, please, that you do take out the battery. So you just squeeze this button, okay? And again, it does like to stick and push out the battery and then put it back on the charger. 
Once you're all mixed up, then you're ready to put the glaze onto your piece. There's a lot of different ways to do this. The first, most basic, most simple way to do it is use some of these um, glazing tongs, okay? And you're going to hold your piece with the tongs. So you're gonna kind of squeeze it. So you're gonna squeeze your art piece. Don't squeeze too hard because honestly you can crack your art piece. Um, but just enough to hold it. And then you're gonna put it into the glaze. Just dip it. Dip it all the way down in there. I usually count to like two or three seconds and then you pull it up and you let it drip right here over the bucket. Let it drip. Okay. Now, if you notice, it is wet. So I bring it over here to the stainless steel table. I set it down, carefully remove the tongs and wash the tongs. Okay. While you're washing and all of that, you are letting this glaze absorb into the bisqueware. Bisqueware, it's like a sponge. It really sucks up that moisture. You need to give it a few minutes. It takes a few minutes, okay? Once this is dry and it's not, it's not far, um, but once it's dry, then I can take it to the next glaze and dip it in the next glaze. Remember my test tile said first, you're gonna dip it into um, speckled tan, and then the second is gonna be textured moss, okay? Important, if you have learned anything today, learn this, no more than two layers of glaze, no more. If I were to put a third layer of glaze on there, it'd be too much glaze, and when I put it in the kiln, so much of it would melt, it would melt off of your art piece, okay? You cannot go over two. You're allowed to have one or two, that's it, okay? If I wanted to call this done right now, I could. I don't have to put a second layer on. It's just an option, okay? The other thing to think about is sometimes you can do half and half. You don't always have to dip the whole thing. So what you could do is if you want the bottom to be one color, you can come to your glaze, hold your art piece, dip half of it, pull it up, right? Bring it over here, let it dry. When it's dry and you can touch it, hold it very carefully, okay? Now upside down and you would bring it to the next glaze, dip it halfway, okay? And you can get the two colors, all right? That's also how this one was done, the two colors, okay? Sometimes too, you maybe want the outside one color, the inside a different color. Here's how you would do that. You use these tools. If I wanted the inside one color, I'm going to start with that. I'm going to scoop up the glaze, pour it on the inside, okay, swirl it around, and then I'm going to dump that out. And then I'm going to let it sit here, and I'm going to let it dry, right? Then when that's dry, now I can do the outside. Take the outside, go to a different color, dip the outside and pull it up and then bring it here to dry. Okay. So there's a lot of ways you can work with the glazes, but they're all about stirring and dipping or pouring. Okay. No brushing. If I see any paint brushes in these glazes, I'm going to stop you because it'll look terrible. Mid-fire glazes are suspension glazes. You have to mix it up, stir it up, and then you have to capture it onto your art piece. You can't brush it on, okay? The last thing you're gonna do, now that this is about dry, okay? If I can touch it and it's not goopy, 
then I'm good to go. The next step is the bottoms. All of this glaze has to be removed and a little bit around the corner, okay? So the way that we do that is we carefully hold it, we come to the sink, and that's what all of these little yellow and green sponges are for. Get it wet. Okay. And then the glaze just wipes off. Okay, I mean, you have to be patient and give it a second, but it just comes right off. Let me rinse this again. So I did the bottom, but that's not enough. I have to go a little bit around the outside edge. When I load a glaze fire, if you have glaze on the bottom of your piece, and if you did not come around the corner a little bit with wiping, I don't fire it. I absolutely positively will not put it in the kiln because all of that glaze down there, that's liquid glass. And what would happen if I fired it is it would completely fuse to the shelf inside of the kiln. So not only would you now not have an art piece, because I would have to hammer it off of my shelf, which means I'm gonna be busting up your art piece, but it also eats and destroys my kiln shelves. And so this is what I look for when I'm loading. If you have any hint of glaze on there, not getting fired, okay? So that's how it has to look, all right? Notice I am very careful when touching it. Um, can you see those little bit of fingerprints, okay? Those fingerprints sometimes, oftentimes, can be fired into the glaze. So the less you touch it, the better. Um, I'm always just trying to use two fingers and hardly touching it. You do not wanna just grab it and um, you know, put your entire hands on it because it will ruin the final product. Okay. Once you are done glazing and you've wiped the bottom, it goes on the to be fired cart and then the rest is left for me to take care of. So hopefully um, you got a good idea of how to work with glazing now, and if you have any questions, let me know.